Hey everyone, my name is Jacob, and I'm a machine learning engineer and developer evangelist at Voxel 51. 51 is the leading open source toolkit for curation and visualization of computer vision data. And 51 plugins are an extensible framework that allow you to customize the functionality within 51 for your particular workflows. We're currently in the middle of a 10 weeks of plugin series where each week we bring you a or multiple new plugins that just showcase some of the new things that you can do with this plugin system. Uh, this is week six and today we'll be talking about uh, zero shot prediction. In particular, we'll be talking about zero shot classification, detection and segmentation tasks. Uh, so we're currently looking at the Oxford pets data set. Uh, we are going to be using this data set for this demo. Now, the zero shot prediction plugin uh, is available at this GitHub repo. So if we go down to the bottom here, uh, we can see the installation instructions and uh, you can use the 51 command line interface, uh, 51 plugins download syntax and then pass in the name of the GitHub repo, which is github.com slash Jacob Marks slash zero shot prediction plugin. Um, if you have the plugin management plugin as well. You can do this through the app. Uh, so you can install the plugin via one of the other plugins that we have. Uh, but basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using labels that we are providing at runtime in order to um, do things and perform tasks on our data set. So typically the way that machine learning works is you train a model to recognize certain classes or certain types of scenarios uh, and you can only then predict or run inference on those classes uh, the next time that you actually want to use the model so an example of this is a lot of models including uh, the yolo models that are one of the, some of the best uh, single stage detector models out there um, are all trained on the COCO label. So that's a set of uh, 80 classes, uh, which uh, are pretty standard now for a lot of tasks. But you may not always want to use the classes from a particular set of, of, uh, of data that has been used to train other things. So for your use case, uh, you're going to probably need to work with custom labels. And in order to do that, you'll need to generate ground truth data. And from that ground truth data, you'll train a model or fine tune an existing model. Um, this is not a solution to all of that. Uh, but what zero shot prediction can do is it can provide a really easy way to do the pre labeling on your data for whatever labels you'd like, uh, or it can provide a, a benchmark. So it's like a baseline uh, against which you can compare uh, your fine tuned or from scratch trained models. So I'm gonna show you how this works uh, and then we'll talk about what's going on here. So this plugin comes with five operators. So operators are, uh, these are all Python operators. This is a Python plugin. Um, operators allow you to run blocks of code or perform computations uh, via UI within the app. Uh, and all these operators are available if we hit the backtick or tilde button on our keyboard. And then we can type in zero and we can see the five operators that show up here. So there is perform zero shot prediction, classification, detection, instant segmentation, and semantic segmentation. Um, now, this is a unified interface for all of these zero shot tasks. So we have uh, this one prediction operator allows you to toggle between classification, detection, instant segmentation, and semantic segmentation. And you can choose which model you want. So for semantic segmentation, right now the supported models are ClipSeg and GroupFit. Uh, you can also uh, choose whether you want to input the labels directly. So we could, for instance, say, hey, I want to just do cat and dog, and this would be as a comma separated list, or you can input from a file. Uh, we're going to show examples of both of these types of workflows in a second. You can name the label field and you can choose to have this run in real time or to delegate this for future execution. So you can schedule this and queue it as a job that you can then run uh, or launch at a later time. Now, if we go back to our operators list and we go back to typing in zero here, uh, these four other operators, classification, detection, instant segmentation, and semantic segmentation are if you know which task you want to run and you don't want to go through this whole, uh, like this whole interface that unifies all four tasks. So if we go to the classification task here. Uh, we can see that this is 
just classification models. So we can choose between any of the three classification models that are currently supported by this zero shot prediction plugin. And those are clip, alt clip, and align. Let's see a simple example of this. So if I take a single image here and I select it and I hit this classification right here, um, let's choose a clip model just to uh, be simple and let's input directly. We'll just do a cat and a dog and then we'll call this um, pet type. This will be the label field in which we'll put this. And we wanna do this in real time because this is only a single image, so it will be very quick. Um, and we are going to hit this selected samples uh, option right here, which is going to run this on just the selected samples, not the entire data set. Hitting execute, it should run this and it will refresh the data set. And we now see this cat label here in the corner. Um, and that is in this pet type label field. Awesome. Okay, now this was running it on a selected sample. We can also run it on the entire data set um, or we can run it on a view. So uh, let's, for instance, say we want to detect all dogs in this set of samples. So we're going to select these samples. We'll go to our detection and then we're gonna be using this Alivit model and we'll just use a dog as input here. And then we'll do this as dogs, we'll just call it, or we'll keep it as out of it. Now we'll execute. And now this is going to find us um, all of the dogs. And of course, this is not going to be perfect, right? Like the point of this is not that you have models that are perfect out of the box. Otherwise, we wouldn't need to train new models, um, but this does a pretty good job because it has an understanding of both text and images. It is multimodal, uh, and so we can harness the power of its understanding of language and images in order to, using this new input label data, this input text data, uh, to add these labels to our data set. So we can see that the operation completed, and we have a bunch of boxes. So this is a dog right here. We've got a bunch of dogs and it did a pretty good job of recognizing dogs and it did not recognize this as a dog because it's a cat. So it did a pretty good job. Now let's say we want to take all of these that we just generated. Um, so we, we generated these bounding boxes on all of these and we'll select all of them. Uh, so let's select all of the things that have this label dog and let's bookmark this. So uh, we turned it into a view. And now that we have this view, let's say we wanted to run a classification model on this to determine what dog breed it is. So if we go and hit zero and we go to our, let's go to the unified prediction interface this time, we can hit classification. Uh, we'll use this time, let's use a line and let's input from a file. So you can upload or you can use a URL. So you don't even need to have the, the data locally in order to do this, but we're gonna upload. Um, and I have this dog breeds uh, list, which I just generated. And this is not comprehensive. Of course, there are many dog breeds. I just put a few here, um, but you know, it was a good starting point. So we're going to say, hey, for this view, I want you to predict what the dog breed is for each of these dogs. And it should also execute pretty quickly on this one. And the a lot of the models here are from the Hugging Face Transformers library. So in order to use these, you will need to have the Transformers library um, installed. Uh, the other models are Clip and Sam. So uh, Sam requires that you have the segment anything library from Facebook installed. Uh, so you can pip install that by passing pip install and then git plus the name of that Facebook slash segment anything uh, repo. Uh, and then clip comes from the 51 model zoo. So segment anything and clip are both from the 51 model zoo, but clip you don't even need to have the, the clip library uh, 
installed to, to, to work with this. So we can see that the predictions uh, were added. So we have these labels of Beagle, Samoyed, Chihuahua, Basset Hound, Pug, uh, and then we've got you know some pretty good labels that even got the Shiba Inu. Um, I would say that this was a success here. So we've now looked at adding labels in directly, adding them from a file. Uh, we've looked at uh, classification and detection, and we've, we've generated predictions for samples uh, that are selected in our view. Um, we have not done the data set yet. So to do that, let's say we want to generate some instance segmentations for all the dogs in our data set. And we're not going to wait around for this because this is a lot of samples. Uh, so this would be a fairly long operation, but we're going to go to our instance segmentation right here. This is our instance segmentation interface, and we can select which of these combinations. So it's going to use Owlvit for the detection, and then one of these segment anything model checkpoints, one of these model sizes uh, for the segmentation with bounding box box prompts. And so let's use this one. And let's just pass in dog here. And this time we're going to delegate the execution because this is a longer running operation. And we can hit schedule. And then what we would do is we would hop on over to a terminal and run 51 delegated launch. So uh, this is another instance of the 51 command line interface or CLI syntax. Uh, so delegated is the way to control uh, the operations for for delegated operators. So you can have this execution run either on your current machine or on another machine. Uh, and there's a lot of flexibility in how you do all of this. So that's really all there is to it about using this plugin. Um, it's really simple to use. And that's part of the power of it is that now you can generate some preliminary or baseline labels for your data without really having to think too much about the details. And of course, you're going to want to refine all of this. You're going to want to train your own models and fine tune models. Um, and you know these models are not going to be perfect, but they're a really good start. They're going to save you a lot of time. Uh, and especially if you use them in conjunction with the active learning plugin uh, and our other uh, annotation integrations. So we have integrations with Stevat, Label Studio, and Labelbox. Um, looking under the hood a little bit at how the plugin is implemented, uh, we can see that it is a 51 uh, Python plugin. So there's no JavaScript or TypeScript code here. Um, and we have this init file, which is what uh, is the registration. It, this contains the registration for our operators. Um, so at the very bottom here of this file, we register all five of the operators that we are defining. Uh, we can see we have our zero shot semantic segment, we have zero shot instance segment, zero shot detect, zero shot classify. And the reason that this code is uh, so simple, so pithy, is because I've extracted a lot of the uh, flow that is common to all of these task types into this input control flow and execute control flow uh, set of methods or set of functions. So all of this is going to be pretty common regardless of which task you are doing. Um, and then we can see this is the more complicated operator, which includes all of the zero shot tasks here. Uh, but basically, uh, and, and this code up here, by the way, um, what's going on here is we are adding our classification, detection, instance segmentation, and semantic segmentation imports. So all of these modules uh, are defined as in separate files. Uh, we'll look at those in a second. Uh, we have this set of tasks that are supported right now. So you can even add your own zero shot task. For instance, you might want to add um, tagging. We have these model lists. And so these model lists are actually defined in the module files. Execution mode. So this execution mode block of code right here uh, just is the control for uh, whether or not we execute uh, or uh, you know, and basically that this allows us to um, toggle on and off uh, the, the delegation. So we can decide whether we want to delegate the execution or not. Um, and this list target views basically says, okay, if you have a view that is not the entire data set, or if you have selected samples, those are options which you may want to use uh, in order to run inference on. So you may not want to run inference on your entire data set, 
And this gives you the choices of whether you want to run inference on your selected samples, your view, or your data set, depending on which differences you have. Stepping out second, we can look at the modules where we define our uh, tasks. So we have one module for each task, and let's look in the classification one, um, just as an example. And this is what I meant about how you all you need to do is define a model. Uh, so you define a 51 model object. Uh, this defines the, the class. And in this case, we already have the clip model uh, in the 51 model zoo. So we're just basically wrapping that. But for other models, like for alt clip, uh, I defined this class, which did, it was basically wraps all of the hugging face transformers library input and output uh, syntax so that we can, at the end of the day, just run 51 models predict or apply model method. Uh, and we can generate these predictions in 51 label types on our data. We've also got these activators. So every model needs to come with an activator. Uh, so this activator is basically saying, hey, uh, is this model able to be used? Can I use this model? Uh, can I show this model as an option um, in the UI to the user? And in this case, for alt clip, it depends on whether or not you have the transformers library installed. So if you don't have transformers installed, then you won't be able to use alt clip. And of course, this also uh, obfuscates the fact that if you have it installed, but you don't have the specific model downloaded, the first time you go to run inference on any of your samples, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer because the model will download. And that will depend on your internet speed, of course. Uh, but really all you need to do every time you want to add a model in here is to uh, generate this class and define this, under, uh, basically define this predict method. And uh, we use uh, this hidden or internal predict method in order to do a lot of the logic around it. Um, and then you define the activator and you add them to the object or, or the variable uh, which contains uh, the dictionary mapping each model as it appears in the UI in our operators uh, to the activator model and model name. Uh, that's all there is to it. Uh, the, the files for detection and instance segmentation and semantic segmentation look very similar. Here you can see the exact same structure. Again, very simple, very modular. And if you want to add your own task, all you need to do is to add a new file for that task and then import that task. So if we go back to our init file, um, you need to import that task in this fashion and add the task to these right here. And then you can add the flow, the, the logic flow to the zero shot prediction. So you'd have to add it to this zero shot tasks operator, and you can also add it uh, as a standalone operator here, uh, like these. The last place that you'll need to look and the, the last thing you'll need to do in order to have this uh, actually registered properly with the 51 app is to add the operators that you define if you choose to define any new ones um, in this operators list in your 51 YAML file. Um, that's all there is to it. I hope this is helpful to you. and. If you enjoyed this, uh, I really encourage you to check out our active learning plugin, as well as our integrations with Labelbox, Label Studio, and CBAT. Um, thanks so much, and until next time.